Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of El Supercast. With me today is Internet's very own John Jay from the interwebs. How are you doing today, sir? Good evening, America. How are you doing today? I am doing, well, about the same as you're doing. We're both <laughs> exhausted oh, yes. and uh, worn out from New York Comic Con. Mm-hmm. This was my uh, first year there as press and got some cool stuff done. Mm-hmm. Learned a thing or two about uh, how the press thing functions. <laughs> and uh, if I'm press next year, oh, you better believe it, major interviews are going to happen. Mm. How about you, sir? How was your experience in a- Um I don't want to downplay it, but at the same time, I don't want to gloat. But it, it was, it was excellent. Mm. I would, that's how I would put it, putting it lightly, basically. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with you about the press thing. Uh, it's very interesting. You get, I'm sure you've been bombarded with the massive emails from everyone, from Stan Lee to Dark Horse Comics to uh, Pretzel Hut. <laughs> <laughs> It's a very interesting experience, to say the least. Mm. Yeah, everyone wants you to review their new stuff, and a lot of it's pretty cool. And, uh... Well, the thing is, I'm not really much of a reviewer. I'll talk about it. And if it's something cool, like I may give it some props. And we lost Centroid for a bit. Oh, yeah! Alright, so we're back. Skype decided to uh, be a pain in the butt there. Mm. Very Very silly Skype. Yes. Sometimes technology decides to, okay, we're just going to fail right now. So let's get back to your experience with Comic-Con. It was, it was on. I'm hearing mm-hmm. an echo. Are you? Uh, no, not really. Oh, oh. oh. never no. mind then. <laughs> uh, uh, so, so where did we leave off? I'm kind of uh, forgot. Uh, let's see here. You were discussing, hmm, something or another about uh. Your experiences with uh, Comic-Con. Oh, well, overall, I enjoyed myself. I mean, there was lots of things to see, lots of things to cover. Adult Swim was there, of course. Um, treated to some uh, Dana Snyder-related news I can I can give is that, uh, and if anyone saw last night's episode of Super Jail, uh, Dana Snyder is officially a new voice on Super Jail. That's fantastic. Um, then, you know, there's a bunch of other stuff. Uh, China, Illinois was there. Venture Brothers, Robot Chicken. Children's Hospital. Emmy Award winning Children's Hospital now. Yep. And, uh, NTSF SUV. All had panels. And as I really well enjoyed as the... the show. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, there was one point where I, like, basically went online on the on the uh, Adult Swim website and saw the full run. Of the first season? And I was like, oh, this is very good. Yeah. Yeah, Paul Shear's a great guy. I was uh, fortunate enough to meet him and uh, have a little chat with him, which may or may not show up in video form uh, very soon, among other videos that you may see on adultswimcentral.com. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see... Uh, how many because there was a whole boatload of different media and press people covering comic-con right you had your uh, big fish your g4 your mtv and then you had guys like me yeah yeah <laughs> from, a guys year, like me. <laughs> from a 10 year old website that uh finally is making its mark on the uh, adult swim universe online so is your site uh, no longer considered fan base? Is it considered legit now? 
Um, I think it's a bit of both. I like to think so at this point. I mean, uh, who knows what will happen in the future. Uh-huh. I mean, there's a uh, proposed uh, documentary on Adult Swim that's uh, coming up in the next year or so. Really? Mm-hmm. The, oh, uh, that would be I, interesting to see. Yeah. Uh, Adult Swim uh, had a UK arm to it. And unfortunately, Turner cut their funding right now, and the people who are behind the uh, Adult Swim UK uh, website, pretty much, mm -hmm. are uh, out and about. They came to New York to film stuff at Comic-Con. Uh, I was fortunate enough to hang with them, and apparently I'm the face of this uh, documentary that they're doing. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. Well, that's fantastic. I'm really psyched they're coming here uh, Wednesday to uh, shoot more footage So to the home office for the first time ever. You at home, if you find this uh, documentary in the near future, you'll be able to see the home base of Adult Swim Central and Adventure Club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Actually, I think, you guys, I think guys... You guys uh, had a bit of a setback with uh, YouTube deciding to, hey... Oh. You guys need to get out. Yeah, I don't know what that was about because we weren't really warned. I mean, Guy is uh, apparently appealing it, but I don't know where he is on that. Uh -huh. Really bums me out because there's a lot of uh, different videos we've both done. You know, he does the bunch of junk where he shows off five things a week yep. that he's uh, collected over time. And I was doing na nappy times in my car and eventually in my house. Like, I'm pretty sure I was the last one that uh, heard the interview with uh, Blue Mini before YouTube decided, like, oh, well, this website no longer exists. Well, you can't say that because that was the video form. Uh, see, what Guy would do is put up little snippets of uh, some of our interviews that we've done with different people just to get people hooked into them. Have it Well, the one that I heard was the, uh, was, I believe, the full one because it was a lot longer. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm sure he's uh, translated or transferred it to uh, AdventureClubPodcast.com. I can't imagine he wouldn't. Also, so, I can. Let me ask you this. Hmm. Was the mass of people greater than years before? I believe it was. I still feel like, and maybe it's because it's easier for me to maneuver around because it's my home city and what have you, but I feel like there's more of a lax feeling to New York Comic Con where it's not like San Diego where it's like, hey, you gotta go, you know? Mm -hmm. And maybe that's a, a part security's fault because they weren't really controlling it a lot. I mean, there were a lot of backups, especially getting into the building. Oh, yeah people uh, with gigantic costumes uh, taking pictures in hallways and on escalators and everywhere you really shouldn't be taking them. Mm -hmm. And I mean... And let's not forget the uh, random I have a boombox. Let's have a random dance party right now! Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the uh, last final day, uh, Sunday, yesterday, uh, which I call the mass exodus where people begin to start leaving the uh, show floor at five o'clock uh we were witness to the unfortunate uh gangnam oh yeah not a fan i can't say i'm a fan of that. really well it's everywhere man well yeah hopefully it's a, a fad that'll die away you know quickly and well i don't know like it's it's been going on pretty strong well, that's how they usually start. Yeah, and like, it'll be interesting to see if that guy will be just known for this one hit, or if he comes back with something even greater. Who's to say? I don't know. Like, maybe next year, he may be at New York Comic Con. That would be interesting. No, he, he seems like a guy who would be at Raffle Con. So, or maybe Dragon Con. Dragon Con? Mm -hmm. oh, all right. Well, I can now honestly say that I have shook hands with a Doctor Who. Oh, really? Yes. I had a brief discussion with him, which uh, for reasons that I cannot go into detail, I was 
unable to record mm-hmm. and uh yeah i shook his hand and went on my merry way now you're, when you say you shook the hand of a doctor who you mean one of the actors who played doctor who that is correct oh fantastic yep mr peter davidson who was one of the guests of new york comic-con very nice and i think that uh the people will enjoy the really good interviews that were done at a place called Time Scare. Mm-hmm. There was a after party going on there with a group of individuals who are from the guy with the glasses. Oh, really? Yes. I was not aware of that. So, I'll obviously post uh, links to the videos when they become available in the future, so all the fans out there can check it out. Mm-hmm. But for me, New York Comic Con was it was okay. You know, it it had its uh, it had its good points and it also had its bad points. Yeah. Now this is what disappointed me. Mm-hmm. I saw a bootlegger there. Okay. Now on the book that they give everyone, right? They say that they do not tolerate bootleggers. Mm. So obviously. Whoever this vendor was somehow got through whatever filters that were there to prevent it. Yeah, there's probably there's probably ways and loopholes around it. Mm-hmm. And you know, for me, it was disappointing because had it had been uh, legitimate merchandise, I probably would have bought it because it was something that was right up my alley. I don't want to say what it was because I don't want to give. Uh, I don't want to give any exposure to this, uh, let's just say, uh, less than legit vendor. Right. And other things, like, I did notice that there were good things. Like, for the most part, the staff was friendly and helpful. Right. Like, there was one situation where me and my team were trying to figure out if our contact for the Stan Lee was at the actual building. Because as you may or may not know, Javits Center, sometimes you have an okay signal and sometimes you don't. Mm-hmm. So there most was most of the time you don't. Yeah, most of the time you Saturday don't. Saturday and Sunday. So my fellow interviewer was basically running back and forth trying to uh, get in contact with our contact and. While I was waiting in line for the whole Stan Lee panel, I saw that uh, that a staff person was there, and I basically called them over and I explained the situation. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, my partner came back, and she also uh, showed uh, the staff member a uh, the name of our contact. So, because she was obviously not at the Javits, we were unable to. Uh, Secure a one-on-one with Mr. Lee. Right. But what we did do is uh, we got some background footage of uh, some of the other interviews that uh, he was able to do. So at least we got that much. Hmm. And we did get the full panel. So that was nice. Hmm, That's great. And for me, I think I got a kick out of uh, almost interviewing uh, Tito Santana, Greg the Hammer Valentine, and Brutus the Barber Beefcake. I did see them there. I couldn't make out Beefcake. He, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was Don Morocco for a second there. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, you know, he he looks a little different than than he used to when he was wrestling. Right. So how about you? Did you uh bump into any uh famous people besides uh the Adult Swim peeps that were in there? Uh, I did see I, when I was going to the uh, press interview area. I did catch a glimpse of Bruce Campbell. Nice. Didn't really have the time to, uh, well, nor did he, I'm sure, but mm-hmm. uh, to say hello or anything. Plus, I don't like being too, uh, or at all, bothersome to yeah, the yeah. Uh, celebrities. Uh, a gentleman I met at the uh, Comic-Con asked me to uh, take his picture with Lloyd Kaufman of Troma. Mm-hmm. So, talk to him briefly. Wish I had had more to say to him, but unfortunately, I've only seen like a couple of trauma movies. Well, we are almost out of time, so uh, Centroid, mm-hmm. if you can uh, give us a website or two that uh, would pique 
the uh, fans' interests. Absolutely. I mean, check out adultswimcentral.com, uh, where the the news outlet for all things Adult Swim at this point. Uh, there is coverage from New York Comic Con up there. There will be video interviews and what have you that are online uh, pretty soon, hopefully, in the near future. Um, AdventureClubPodcast.com, that's going fantastic. Myself and Mr. Guy Hutchinson from the Snidecast Experience. Um, right. We are extremely out of time, so we'll have to cut it at that. Oh.